Yes, the videos for this will all be uploaded to YouTube soon. Yeah, I would say if you want to learn, like you can learn a lot of all like the design patterns that I pointed out, like the singleton pattern and the object pool pattern. Those are just patterns that are true in software development, not just in games and in any programming language. So that kind of like more computer science theory, it, you can learn from a book great because it doesn't change. Unity or any specific piece of software is usually changing really fast. So by the time you get a book, it's probably out of date. So that's kind of the limitation of that. That's why like using the Unity website is probably the resource I recommend, you know, not just because I, that's my project that I work on, but um, that's my perspective on that. Yes, we will be continuing on Twitch. Uh, we will be doing live training every two weeks. There's a couple more sessions coming up uh, in the next few days, actually. Uh, with Mike Geig. Um, you can find the whole schedule at, I'll post the link in the chat. It is here. Um, somebody's asking about version control software. We use Mercurial. Uh, with Tortoise HG in the office. I've also used um, Tower with GitHub on a Mac at home. Um, doesn't, I don't think it really matters that much. Uh, Unity has a collab version control style platform coming soon, um, but it's not out yet. That'll be integrated with the editor. Iron Oxygen asks, would you recommend the singleton structure for most projects? Personally, I'm finding it great. Is there any downsides? You know, I personally like it as an approach and I can't come up with the downsides off the top of my head. If you look, you know, go do some research, Google singleton pattern game design and you'll find some people who will be like, no, it's the worst thing since ever and burn it with fire. You should always do my favorite pattern, you know. There are people who just like and prefer a different pattern and every design pattern has strengths and weaknesses. I think especially for a small, simple game like this, it's great. Um, and I think it's an interesting pattern to have in your toolbox. Uh, I would read up on someone who disagrees with it to see what they see as the limitations um, so you can decide you know, how you want to address those. But I, I think it's a nice pattern. Um, the programming in the unity. So iron black man asks, did the programming in the unity editor change since 5.3? Not significantly. It's really, there's a couple small changes to the API and mainly new features and stuff. Generally speaking, we try not to change old features. Uh, we mainly add new stuff, but there may be small changes. You'll have to take a look at the release notes to see if there's anything that really affects you. Uh, Ivantro, I don't actually have a great answer for you about that, about positioning scroll views programmatically. Um, I would have to get back to you on that. I don't have an answer off the top of my head. Uh, SHMOCM asks, does Unity have or support or a preferred library for dependency injection and unit testing, integration testing? You know... I, the short answer is no. And I'm, I've never actually worked a lot with dependency injection. The only kind of anecdotal advice I can give about this is uh, a friend of mine, actually Kerry, who's another programmer at Unity uh, or a programmer on the R&D content team was saying, generally speaking, people who come from a dependency injection background tend to get a little sort of messed up with Unity because it's not a pattern that kind of Unity supports very well or that it works with very well. So that generally speaking, you kind of want to learn the Unity way of doing things and that dependency injection can kind of conflict with that. Not knowing more than that, I can't really give great advice, but I would just say um, <laughs> look out and be careful and do a little further research. 
Okay. The, the VOD for this on Twitch should come up quite quickly. It's kind of a longer session, so it might take a minute or two. But I think once I cut the stream, it should pop up pretty quickly and be there, you know, any minute. Um, yeah. Okay, guys, I'm going to cut it there. Thank you so much for sticking around for this marathon session. Um, I really appreciate it, and it's great to see you all. And I will be back in two weeks with another live session. Please keep an eye on the schedule. I think we might move to Wednesdays at this time. That's something we've been talking about. And so I will update the schedule once I confirm that that's something that we're going to do. But we may move from Monday to Wednesday at the same time, keeping our every two weeks schedule. And also check out uh, starting... On Wednesday, Mike Guy will be doing a three-day marathon special on creating a multi, a networked multiplayer FPS, which he calls his Merry Fragmas. And this will be Merry Fragmas 3.0. He's done it for two years. It's a lot of fun. So I recommend you guys check that out. And yeah, thanks again for watching. And I will see you in two weeks. Bye.